pity in my heart for the chief witness for the state. She is the victim of cruel poverty and ignorance. But my pity does not extend so far as to her putting a man's life at stake, which she has done in an effort to get rid of her own guilt. Now, I say guilt because it was guilt that motivated her. She's committed no crime. She has merely broken a rigid and time-honored code of our society, a code so severe that anyone who breaks it is hounded from our midst as unfit to live with. Now, what did she do? She did something that in our society is unspeakable. She kissed a black man. She was white and she kissed a black man. No code mattered to her before she broke it, but it came crashing down on her afterwards. Now, the witnesses for the state, with the exception of the sheriff of Macon County, have presented themselves to this court in the cynical confidence that their testimony would not be doubted, confident that you all would go along with them on the evil assumption that all black men lie. All black men are basically immoral beings. All black men are not to be trusted around white women. An assumption one associates with minds of their caliber and is a lie. And so a quiet, humble, respectable black man who has the unmitigated temerity to feel sorry for a white woman, has to put his word against two white peoples. The defendant is not guilty, but somebody in this courtroom is. In this country, our courts are the great levelers. All men are created equal. <coughs> I'm no idealist to believe firmly in the integrity of our courts and of our jury system. That is no ideal to me. That's a living, working reality. I have confidence that you will review the testimony you have heard without <laughs> passion, come to a decision, and restore this man to his family. In the name of God, do your duty. In the name of God, believe Tom Robinson. Thank you.